so we launch the weather project. Right. And part of this program will be try, yeah. trying to answer that very specific individual local question, how can we make ourselves more comfortable, how can we do a better job uh, with the energy that we use. Not only how we, the inhabitants of this earth, on a global picture, uh, can live in greater harmony with the environment by reducing our carbon footprint, but also how I can live a cozier life. We are dedicating this uh, event today and tomorrow to the um, memory of, the uh, inspiration of, um, and uh, the energy of Pete Seeger. So as we go through this day and reflect on this, think of the ways we can use our heads, our hearts, and our hands to help the earth and to do our best for the good of all. However, SASB and this symposium is not about opposition. It's about four actions. It's about solutions. Uh, we are for the development of renewable energy. We're for the implementation of energy efficiency measures. We're for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. And we're for supporting our local farmers and helping the agricultural sector. The most important weather there is is whether or not we're part of the solution. So, thank you all and enjoy the symposium. The Weather Project is our experiment. Today is an exponential growth of that initial idea and the people involved. Stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere. Chlorofluorocarbons, what happens is when they make their way up to the stratosphere, the ultraviolet light breaks them down, they release chlorine, and that's what's causing the hole in the ozone. Oh, that totally sucks. <laughs> Can they do something about it? Close to 70% of the energy that gets used in the, it's like 60 something percent of the energy that gets used in the United States is for manufacturing, manufacturing unnecessary items. That's my favorite quote from Mark Twain. Civilization is the endless multiplication of unnecessary necessities. That's what we're experiencing today. If we literally turned off all greenhouse gases in the whole world, the emissions in the whole world today, the Earth would continue to warm probably for another 60 years. And that's because the greenhouse gases that are already in the atmosphere have committed us to future change. Maintaining healthy forests is probably one of the most important things that we can do uh, to protect water resources. The, the, the forest resources that we have here in the Upper Delaware region are, are really the reason that our water resources are so healthy. We need to get really serious about treating all of our natural resources, not only the forest, but also our agricultural lands. Uh, with a very different mindset that takes the long view, not the short term. There are things we can each do, and it can't be in the future. Find the way to finance it to do it now so we really can participate in mitigation as we're planning for adaptation. And maybe we can borrow a bit from the ethics of science and of the performer and deal truthfully with ourselves and with each other give and take constructive criticism to the best of our knowledge and abilities. I would give, and so would you give, all our arms and legs for one shred of truth. We use that sustainable operations within an organization and the environmental paradigm to create cultural change. And what's cultural change is that awareness of everything I do has an effect. I think that as we reach out into the community, part of what's going to make this happen at the top level is the demand from citizens that this happen. Take responsibility and believe that, that you can make a difference. We need to strengthen our communities. We need to begin to uh, to, to base our uh, energy conservation, our economy, it, it all should become more community-based, I think. That's the key. What kind, of, what kind of arguments do you pose 
um, to not allow an, a return after 30 or 40 years, a return to the um, delusion that nuclear power is going to be the answer. Put a renewable energy or several renewable energy efficiency measures into effect where you live so that you are confirmed. We've made that commitment, nourishing you, giving you confidence, giving you clarity, and giving you the energy. Look, I can do this, we can do this, and if we all get together, my golly, and, and we better, or we're toast. Communities of color, the elderly, young children, and the poor who bear the burden of disease and death from climate change. The existing conditions that already caused worse health among these populations, lack of clean air, water, and unhealthy living conditions, will be exacerbated by the adverse effects of climate change. We're running at a deficit now for like 30 years. We're using stuff up. We don't have the resources. We're not getting any more from some other planet or something. We're not going to get any more things to use. So, We've got a limited basis of stuff, and we've got a, a, an expanding population. And it, you know, the, the reality is that we, we and we're, yet we still have what we're uh, pursuing as our growth economies. What can I say in terms of what to do next? I guess yes, insulate your homes, but go to Washington. Fuel in the form of wind, water, and sunlight will always have a cost of zero and it does not have the price of volatility. Since it's always at zero, it does not have the price of volatility that is so typical of natural gas, for example. As communities become more self-sustainable, they reach out to neighboring communities in their region, and it spreads. Transition presumes the impossibility of infinite economic growth in a finite economic system. That means planet Earth. That's our finite economic system. We have sniffling bats and tourist insects from New Jersey. The ocean is not so far away. But the automobile is still the largest single culprit. Wait, wasn't that farming? <laughs> Leave the discussion on all that hot air. Oh, blowing in the wind. Interrupt, interrupt, interrupt. Cell phone in the closet pocket. Interrupt what music is trying to get through. What does the voice on the other end want to say? Our enemies are our friends. And you kind of begin to make community, but you begin to make peace, and you begin to make progress. And I guess that's how I would think about sustainability. I think um, I've heard a lot of different thoughts here today, and I really just think the basic one is to to analyze what you're doing, try to set an example, and really just do it, take action. And it can be done at the local level. If you have people listening and, and being vocal, and we've had good success. Your mind is thinking, holy crap, there's something serious going on here. I need to learn, either learn more about it or I need to actually do something tomorrow. That's why you're in this room. You can follow the weather reports at the Weather Project Facebook page. Try to only look at it once a day. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support. You may take your seats. <laughs>